Oh, hello YouTube. The patch notes for the new POE League just came out, the flexion, so I'm gonna do a bit of an update to this build guide, because not much changed. And we didn't really get nerfed that much, we also got a few nice buffs, so I guess I'll just start by showing this POB, which is like a regular progression up to sort of an endgame version that doesn't cost that much. And you might be wondering, well, how can we get curse immunity now that tattoos are gone because Trial of the Ancestors isn't going core, so we lose all the tattoos and the only thing that stayed is the unique items from Trial of the Ancestors are in the core drop of the game now and any tattoos and other stuff go to standard and stay there and become scarce, but yeah, we can't use tattoos anymore, so I removed them in the POV. Now the good news is, that means we just get our attributes back that we were sacrificing before, like the dexterity nodes and some strength and all the end, so yeah, that's nice I guess. We get curse immunity, I'm taking this wheel, steeped in the profane, and asylum, which is also a nice chaos resist. And basically, at level 99, these are the nodes I've taken, now you can unspec these two nodes for a bit less life and mana if you want this build to require only level 97 but uh, it's pretty easy to get 99 just farming sanctum and this build is really good at farming sanctum so you could get 99 eventually just by doing a bunch of sanctum tomes and yeah the curse immunity basically this is an example jewel i did this is all you care about on your rare jewels uh, reduce curse effect of curses on you and some resistances. I just put all elemental resist on it, but you should be getting whatever resist you need. Like if you're low on cold and lightning, get one with plus 12 to cold and lightning, for example, and the curse reduction. And they don't all have to be 30%. Most of them can be 25, and just a few of them need to be like 27, 28 for you to hit exactly 150% curse reduction. and. You can see your curse reduction, uh, there, effect of curse on you, minus 15%, because I'm overcapped, I guess. <coughs> yeah. Because I have a bit too much, but that's fine, because these jewels are perfect, but they don't need to be perfect. And then, if they have any other useful mods, great, if they don't don't care too much about it, because if you try looking for ones with life and damage mods on top of these, they'll get pretty expensive. And if yours have open mod slots, just exalt orb them and see what they get. Same for cluster jewels. Spam exalts on them until they have four mods. You might get something useful. And yeah, that's basically it. This is how we get curse immunity, how we used to get it before tattoos, and it's easy. Just four or five of these rare jewels, because you won't have Reign of Splinters early on, so using five of them just guarantees you're immune to curses. And yeah, even with Coward as a Legacy, because of the curse reduction you get from skill tree. And I think that's all I wanted to talk about in the POV. Like, there's not much that's changed. I kind of want to talk about some of the skill gem changes, the Heat Shiver Helmet change, which I've edited the item here just to show it with the change. It's now 30% of cold damage is extra fire against frozen enemies. And we don't freeze bosses anyway, so it barely affects us, but yeah. I think I'm gonna swap to my browser now. Uh... Wait. Hmm... There. Okay, fine. <laughs> I found it. It wasn't in the list for some reason. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, let's go over the gem changes first, I guess. So, some of the gems got worse, but some of them also got better, so we really haven't lost that much damage. For example, Arcane Cloak got changed to give buff effect instead of effect duration, and that's good for us, because we don't really care about its duration. We used increased duration support with it anyway, it has a good enough duration, so this is just making us even have more damage because we're also scaling other arcane cloak effects from our ascendancy. 
and also Arcane Surge is nice together with it, so this is just a damage buff to us. And next... Uh, Cold Snap got changed, we don't care about that. Uh, what else? Elemental Weakness. The quality on this got changed to be Duration of Ailment instead of Increased Effective Curse, so... Wills a bit of damage here. Uh, what else? What else? Flame Dash got changed to rip <laughs> the damage over time instead of cooldown reduction, so your Flame Dash will be slightly worse, so no. Raising Post got changed. It just doesn't have the projectile speed on the gem itself anymore. This isn't a quality change, it's literally. The skill gem lost the projectile speed. I don't know why, I guess they just felt the need to do that. Which I guess makes quality more important on it, because quality now is the only source of projectile speed on freezing pulse, but we don't really care that much about it, it's just our mapping spell, so eh, not much of a change. Uh what else, what else, what else? I just wanna make sure I don't miss any. Ice Nova Show Ice Spear, yeah, this is a big one. Quality on Ice Spear instead of 40 proj speed is now plus 40% crit strike multi, which I have put a custom mod in PLB for now that gives us that, so that's just a free damage buff. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, that's a free damage buff on Ice Spear. I had to sneeze. <laughs> And it's really good. I mean, that's 40 crit strike motive just for free. Now, because of the change to the vendor recipe, we can't just flip main skill gems now. You can only flip support gems now to 20 quality. So we'll have to quality it up ourselves with 20 GCPs and try to corrupt it, which is going to make getting 21 20 gems more annoying. They may get more expensive, but who cares at least. You only have to level them to 20 once now, you don't have to be worried about flipping your main skill and losing damage. You just level 6 gems and then eventually quality them up and corrupt them. But yeah, that's that. Purity uh... of Elements. Uh, snipe, Spark got changed again. I don't care, I don't even level with it. Like still, blah blah blah, golems. Thunder. And yeah, that's it. We have a conviction, we want to use that in the campaign, who cares? Uh, wow, Cold Snap got changed. Basically the same change as Cold Snap. Still don't care about that change. Doesn't really affect us that much. We only use Valkal Snap for Frenzy Charge Generation anyway. Now the support gem changes. Uh, Bone Chill got changed to, to give damage instead of chill duration. I still don't really care because I drop Bone Chill anyway in my endgame setup. Constant damage taken is a nice change. Reduce the amount of damage to trigger our summon golem. Someone lightning call them. Uh, pe -pe -pe. What else? What else? What else? Hypothermia got changed, which is, I think, a better change. It gives us ch more chance to freeze now instead of having increased chill duration. So, normal enemies and maybe bestiary beasts and essences will get frozen more often, and that means we'll do a bit more damage to them. Uh, inspiration. Uh, life tap got changed to last longer. The buff from life tap, which gives you damage, which is a nice change for our build, because the, the increased damage quality on life tap literally did nothing for our build, because we only ever used it on all the other skills except our totem, just to be able to cast them for life, I think. Wait, do we use life tap? Am I getting confused with another build? <laughs> I may be getting confused with another build. Never mind, we don't even use life tap, so this just doesn't change anything. I guess I was thinking of some other build I played. But yeah, that change doesn't affect us. Uh, spell totem got changed, which still doesn't affect us because the spell totem, the only spell totem that we use is in Soul Mantle itself, and that's a level 20 zero quality spell totem. 
But yeah, uh, it's less totem placement speed. Oh no. <laughs> anyway. That's all the support gem changes. Random text on gem changes. Uh, ascendancy, who cares? Passive 3. The only passive 3 changes is accuracy against Mark's enemy stuff, apparently. So yeah, absolutely no passive skill 3 changes. Active changes, yep. Then the unique balance. The most important thing, which some of you might have seen and gotten worried about, is heat shiver only being 30% of cold as extra fire against frozen enemies. Previously 100. <laughs> so, but this doesn't change this first mod. This one is still the same, I'm pretty sure, because they haven't listed it. It only changes this. Hey, look, it's already updated in the wiki, nice. <laughs> but yeah, it's now 30%, so... If you're fighting random white and blue mobs in rares and maps, you would be doing a bit less extra damage to them. But this absolutely doesn't affect our boss DPS, because you never freeze bosses, especially not something like Eater of Worlds or Shaper. You only chill them slightly, and you still get the extra damage from chill in the first mod. So that makes Heat Shaver still our best helmet, and also because of the Labyrinth change and enchants being deleted, we don't need to worry about the good enchant on our boots, we don't need to worry about getting a Heat Shiver with the Ice Spear enchant for a projectile, which means gearing this build will actually be cheaper and easier and less stressful to try to get a Heat Shiver with that enchant early on, because yeah, it might be cheap early, but then it gets to a crazy price. Like In Trial of the Ancestors, I bought one at the start of the league for 3.8 divines, and then in about a week it jumped up to 10 divines, because also all the Scions playing the World Loop, Ice Spear, Freezing Pulse, Bullshit, Walking AFK build. <laughs> so that would be why it was so expensive, I think. But yeah, now we don't need to worry about the Helm Enchant ever again, and I like that change, so... Now, all you do is just buy a normal heat shiver, you don't need corrupted implicits on it or anything, it doesn't need to be corrupted. And you could just make sure it has 30 to buff resist if you even want to, just to get easier resist cap. And you could also divine orbit for resist, but I don't recommend that. It's probably gonna be cheap enough to find one with high resist. Yeah. That's really good. Uh, any other uniques? We don't really care about others. Item balance, a bunch of item base types, and yeah, that's pretty much all I cared about in these patch notes. And yeah, the rest of the build is unchanged. Now, I don't want to post an endgame and maxed version of it with the 6 link staff yet, because I'm gonna need to rework it a bit without tattoos, and it probably won't be able to use a plus 2 amulet anymore, because now we just need dexterity, but who knows, I might think of something. But yeah, that's that. Now to move on to the final thing I want to talk about, which is the new Ascendancies in the League. I've already chosen one, but I'll still talk about the two possible choices that I think are good for this build. Now, this is the first one, uh, which is like Warden of the Magi. And sure, it has some nice stuff, but I'm definitely never going into the whole tinctures thing, because this requires you to mess around with your flasks, and I can't really afford to do that on this build. Every flask is important. I don't want to be changing and replacing flasks and leaving empty flask slots and shit, because I don't think it's ever going to be worth it, no matter what tincture I find that would give me damage or whatever. I don't really care. Now the real good skills are first this one, which is actually pretty decent. Your hits against Mark's enemies, marked enemies cannot be blocked or suppressed, and you see your errors and uniques on your minimap with icons. Wow. But this cannot be blocked or suppressed means that if you have a map mod that gives them suppression or block, or if you're doing expedition and you accidentally hit two remnants with 50% chance to block attacks and spells, so mobs just have a 100% block, well... You can mark them, and with this node, you'll be able to actually kill them like normal monsters. Which is really nice. Because <laughs> I fucking hate that Expedition Remnant mod, I wish they made it yellow so you can see it more easily. But yeah, that's a really nice thing. And also just the uh, Arch Nemesis mods that give monsters spell resistance, which is basically suppression. Or the map mod that gives them suppression, this helps against that. Especially tanky rares. 
And then I would go 1, 2, then 3, 4 into Barak's skin, then 5, 6 into this, which I guess is nice, just for defenses, and then... I mean, the final point would probably be this, but then I would take this, definitely. Because there is an argument to use this Ascendancy, but only in the endgame version, where you already have the 6-link Annihilating Light with your curses in it. Because then you can completely drop cast on damage taken, summon lightning golem, and cast on death portal, and have one empty helm, gloves, or boots. And that means you can use one of these three effects. You can either have 50 auras, which is very nice for our build, because we're definitely hungry for resistances to be capped with that staff. You could have 25% life, which would make you have a bit more HP, but I think that's one of the most useful, useless ones for us, because... We don't have that much life. We don't have that much flat life. So, eh. Or you could have 30 move speed, which would make you faster. It would make you faster at farming heist, maybe. Faster at mapping. Faster at running through Sanctum. So, this is the only reason why I would take this Ascendancy in the very final endgame version of this build. Because this node is just really nice, and I can make use of it without crippling my build too much. Because Lightning Golem, like... I don't really care about it. It's only giving me a million DPS right now with its aura, which isn't even up all the time. So who cares? I can completely drop Lightning Golem and cast on Death Portal and get these nice bonuses. But that's just a possibility. What I think is... I'm What I'm gonna choose personally and what I think could be probably better depending on what the items can draw is the final on this one. Because this one is like caster stuff and summoner stuff and skills to deserve life instead of mana, and it doesn't work with our build. And I think that's why they made this generic one that's just empty sockets, build your own descendancy, because they knew that these two won't be able to fit with thousands of builds and playstyles. It's impossible to make two ascendancies that just fit with all that. So they gave us this one with the charms. And yeah, I would go for this one because... and I won't take this meme <laughs> note. I would just go fully into the left path in the end, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and just build my own Ascendancy. This is what I'm going to be choosing at the start of the league, is my Ascendancy, definitely. And I'll just try to find some nice charms, maybe buy nice ones, and see what mods I can get. I don't know, we, just, we still don't know what these things can roll. They may have some insane things, so there's definitely some power creep that's going to help us with the bit of damage we've lost. Even though we also gain some damage from the crit multi on Ice Spear and from Arcane Cloak effect and all that stuff. But yeah, this is the Ascendancy I'm going with, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Don't really have anything else to talk about, I don't think. Uh, let me just uh, change the POB again. Yeah, I don't think I got anything else to talk about. This is pretty much the build as it is now. Now, I will make an endgame version of it, obviously, when I start playing the league myself. And by endgame, I mean the six link annihilating staff, annihilating light staff, and other stuff. I mean, what other stuff? I don't know. It's pretty much it. Just the six link staff and a, maybe a plus one amulet, at least, with plus one all spells or plus one cold gems. And obviously also Awakened Greater Multiple Projectiles, I'll buy that eventually. But I'm not using it in this one, because I don't... I think it's way too expensive to expect someone to buy it in the League Start build. Awakened Island Cold is usually cheap though. Like a few days or a week into the League, this is, I don't know, 50 Chaos, 60 Chaos, maybe less. And then you can easily level it up with the Anihar Beasts, which I have written about... Uh... Down here, yeah, wild bramblebacks. Then they're about 20 to 30 chaos usually. And just level up your weapon gem to 5 and leave it there and don't corrupt it, because who cares? You only need level 5 for the plus 1 level of gold gems, so yeah. I think that's everything that I wanted to explain. I don't want to really go through the pros and cons of the build or any of that. I've already done that in a different video, and besides, I've written about it here anyways, and a small leveling guide for the acts. So I won't go too much into that, I mean, I've already done a video on this build before, but yeah. It's not changed at all, so that's good. And 
I don't think it got nerfed. Honestly, I think we gained a bit more damage than we had before. The heat shiver change doesn't affect our boss DPS at all. Like, there's no change, because we never freeze bosses anyways. We aren't that kind of build that wants to put a freeze bosses or something. We don't really stack chance to freeze or freeze or chill effect. So, yeah. That's it. I am glad lab enchants are gone, and this makes this build way cheaper and easier to gear. And makes our heat shiver cheaper. And I'll see you in the league. Hopefully it's a good one and we'll have fun, and I'll also probably make a challenge guide video when I do my challenges. And I'll do some update videos on this build when I start playing, but that's all. I'm gonna post some links in the description and in a pinned comment, like this POB and maybe my run through the campaign with this build, which was 7 hours. And yeah, I think that's all. See you in the next video, bye for now, and remember to follow my Twitch channel and sub and stuff. Bye bye.